What's up, Power Painters? This is Taylor Payton of TaypayArt.com and PowerPainters.org coming to you today with another Power Painters tutorial. So this one is going to be based off a question I got on one of my beginner drawing course videos, and it is from the Tiny Timmy Tim Tim. The Tiny Timmy Tim Tim was expressing as a comment that some of his figure work doesn't feel like he can hold up. He feels like once he gets to the legs, the figures are falling apart, they don't look like they're standing, the perspective isn't right, and just generally he doesn't feel like the weight is there and that it looks like it's part of one cohesive human, um, human figure. So I want to address some of the stuff in Photoshop, so we're going to boop over there quickly. But first and foremost, I want to let you know that I appreciate every one of you guys and the great comments you always leave on my videos. I am so happy to make them for you and to address the things that really helped me uh, advance as an artist and figure out how I could go from beginner to somebody who felt more adept at what it is I do. So uh, hopefully we're going to learn some of that in a second here. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, jump into Photoshop and see what we can learn today. Boop. All right, so we are now in Photoshop, and as you can see, I've drawn a straight vertical line and a straight horizontal line, after which I create a little disc, a little uh, ellipse, to sort of give the impression that there is, in fact, a plane to stand on. And then I just create an X that is uh, bisecting in terms of the point where all of the lines meet, that center point right there, and I'm just going to start doodling in a figure here. Now, as I doodle in this figure, my primary concern was just to get a straight up standing basic pose in a very sort of boring normal format because usually the more boring stuff is the stuff that's easier to figure out. So what I like to start with is thinking of that um, vertical line as something I would use to hold up a maquette I was creating or sculpting. So you would need to configure balance by having a straight vertical line that is opposing uh, gravity. It's going against it and it's it's keeping the structure there. And as I doodle in this figure, I'm using that straight vertical line as a guideline to keep my figure feeling like he's actually standing. So uh, this also helps to have a ground plane as well like I drew in. And now I wanted to emphasize a little bit more of a dynamic pose, a little more counterweight. So I've taken the head and I've moved it off of the center of that vertical pole. And now I'm just doodling in some more, um, some more like interesting shapes for the body to contour to. Except that vertical line is always going to be there to remind me what way gravity is pulling my figure. And it always helps to flip your image to make sure that you're double checking how things are looking. And it never hurts to just keep erasing and redrawing until you get something that you're feeling good about. So one thing I did with the arm was I counterbalanced how the figure is kind of leaning back off of the vertical standing pole. And I did that by extending the arm outward and then extending the other arm uh, in the opposite direction as well even though it's bent and I put the foot straight on that point of gravity that center where we can kind of count on balance to balance to be so when you're thinking about your figures you want to think about the center of, of mass which is usually the torso and that's kind of the center of gravity and you have to make sure that you're considering that as you create your poses one thing that really helps is this exercise where you're just drawing that vertical line and making sure that your figures are kind of wrapping around it and staying balanced as a result. But as you can see, with increased complexity from the red figure to the blue figure to the green figure, I have to do a lot more erasing, a lot more shifting of the pose just to figure it out. So if the head is really far from the main center or the torso then you're going to have to compensate by moving the limbs outward more and to make sure that the feet are uh, positioned on the ground plane so the ground plane is going to be your um, it's going to be how you're gauging your perspective in this case and by doodling these three figures I'm just practicing making sure that I know where the feet are going to line up and how the pose is going to look and using my um, my sense of what it is to be human to kind of hold the gravity in that regard. So to sort of quickly recap, we want to start with the more basic poses using this method and keeping in mind the whole time our 
strong vertical line that's going to keep everything in alignment and balanced. It is sort of a friend to the spine because the spine tends to be an S-curve. So that kind of goes like this in relationship to the vertical line where the head would be here and the torso would be closer to that. And then the back of the spine sort of pushes forward onto the torso as we get down to the lumbar region here and the body, well, the legs make sort of an S shape. So it's sort of a rough approximation of how all that looks in terms of like the spine versus how we're held up. So the spine, like I said, is an S and gravity is always, always, always acting upon us 100% of the time, unless we obviously uh, break out of the uh, topmost layer of the, the pull of our planet. But another way you can start to think of this stuff, just so we can help really inculcate the idea that the figure needs to be balanced, is uh, geometrically. It really helps me. So if we have the sphere that is the Earth, that is, that is one sexy Earth right there, and we think that all the gravity is obviously coming from the center and pulling things into it, making sure that as a celestial body things are standing upright on the sphere in regards to the Earth's core. So you can simplify our planet as a sphere and automatically think that everything pointing off of the sphere is making sure that it is in alignment with that center point that pulls everything toward it. And if the ground wasn't solid enough, then we'd, we'd just go through it toward the Earth's core, which is a horrifying thought. But as we think of this as just a simplified sphere where gravity is always acting, and we're always having to stand straight up more or less against that gravity, we as people walk around and have to constantly balance ourselves. So like I said, the further away the head is, from that center point of balance, the more you're going to have to compensate by throwing limbs in the other direction, uh, much like, let's say, a, a figure skater would or somebody who's pretending to be an airplane. Um, yeah, as you get into more figure and gesture drawing, you'll develop a sense for this, and you won't necessarily need to really drill perspective, so to speak, because you'll you'll get a an intuitive feeling in regards to what it is to resist gravity and work as a as a system of parts that wants to keep itself upright regardless of the action it's performing. And like I said, it, it just takes a lot of practice. You can do some perspective stuff if you want, and this is the last little thing I'll show just because I don't want this to get too overly complex. That is not what I want. Dumb sunflower shape. Gosh, okay, so if I make my perspective line, I just extrapolate some, some points from the, the circle there. And I create this box in a really sort of quick fashion. Then, let me turn off that other figure. Then we can see that this cube, if you will, will also allow us to keep everything in alignment as far as how our, our figure is constructed. So if I take all these points back, okay, finally we can draw the figure. This is why I don't usually set up perspective for my figures. It takes forever. Um, it's a good habit to get into, though, especially in the beginning, so uh, don't knock it until you start doing it quite a bit. And I still do it from time to time just to remind myself how I can uh, think geometrically. Anyway, so the figure could be resting within this box, and you know that as long as it's within the box, it's going to have a more stable geometric form to conform to, really. So you 
there's like Andrew Loomis type ways of breaking up this box so that you know exactly where to draw each part like the torso and the head and all that but I'm going to forego that for the sake of the demonstration and just sort of draw a figure within this space here and I'll be able to take the points of this figure back in space to the horizon uh, line or the vanishing point as well so if I have this super simplified maquette that I like to draw and let's let's have him standing a little wider this time I have this box to guide me and the perspective on the ground plane as to where all these pieces are going to fit so the rest just comes down to like anatomical knowledge and knowing how you want the pose to come out and all that stuff but it's easier to align stuff in perspective just because that's what it's for is to make sure that all the forms and the shapes have a relationship to one or two points of extrapolation and that takes time to learn as well but as you sort of get into it and remember that the legs have sort of an S curve to them then you can begin to have a, a better time getting figures to stand the way you want them to stand. Even if they're really rough doodles, they still have more of a weight to them. And you can just keep on adding figures into the box for as long as you want, just getting them to stand in various ways using uh, 3D geometry as opposed to a line. Nothing will help as much as life drawing though, and you'll notice that in a lot of life drawing models they have like a staff or a stick that they can use in order to help convey balance and give you a really strong contrast in terms of a shape and a line as far as how a figure would stand and relate to that. So even if I use a diagonal line and I have the figure sort of standing in a classic pose where they'd be holding that staff that they do in life drawing sessions. Um, this foot is going to need to be under the center of the figure, or I could, you know, push it out the other way. Because if the if the hip is pushed upward, then that's the leg you're going to be putting most of the weight on. And if the hip goes downward, then that's the one that's not getting as much weight. And the figure can even put some of the weight on the staff, so that's also going to help us gauge how we can maintain that balance. So I can put the leg behind and since they're close together they can still relate to uh, the ground with this stick and that helps maintain the balance or if I wanted to redraw them and have this hip be higher then this leg would probably be shooting out away from that main center point and this one would be more underneath again following that sort of general S shape that legs tend to make and we still have balance so it's just something that you can cultivate a feeling for the more you do it it's like practicing scales in music or uh, cooking the same meal over and over you will get a sense of it as long as you pay attention and place uh, all the the stuff as accurately as you can for as long as you can and even though these are super like demonstrative and really quick I can still bang out a lot of these in one night and that will just keep on telling my brain that this is how a figure is standing this is how you can make them look as though they have more balance and that just kind of will allow you to have more creative freedom moving forward which is the fun part you know and I think that it is fun to study but uh, really that we're only building these technical skills so we can express ourselves better and better through our art because otherwise it's just you're not really saying anything but going on a tangent which means it's probably time to wrap up the lecture I want to thank you very much for watching I hope I was able to answer your question again remember that gravity is always acting upon us and we are always reacting to it everything is pulled toward the uh, center of the earth and it as a result is standing straight up usually uh, in contrast to the sphere that is the earth and you can use perspective based exercises to put your figures in cubes which really helps 
or you can just use that straight line method I showed you earlier. A great book to check out for balancing your figures is The Practice and Science of Drawing by Harold Speed. Uh, remember that the spine is an S shape and that legs tend to follow a very subtle S curve as well. Um, all these things are just, like I said, hints and tactics and tips that will allow you to be more expressive moving forward and allow you to have more knowledge to back up what it is you're doing on the picture plane. And with that, dear Power Painters, we are bringing this video to a close. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you'd be so kind as to like, share, comment, subscribe, all those good things. I upload every Monday and Wednesday. Um, yeah, and if you want to acquire even more rich drawing lectures and knowledge, you can go into the description box and check out uh, the Gum Road Store or the Beginner Drawing Course, which will really help you to endow yourself with the fundamentals necessary to supersede a lot of the mistakes that beginners make and keep their wheels spinning for years in terms of art. I did it and I don't want you to do it, so check it out. Um, other things, you can go to powerprinters.org and read some of the articles. I just read it the website, so it has sort of a more fun layout, more visual and if you are a reader as opposed to a listener you will absorb information better that way and there's content that I don't have on the YouTube channel so that's also a bonus too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will be uploading another one, another video for you on Thursday and I will see you then. So happy drawing, happy painting, happy creating and take care Power Painter. Mm -hmm.